Hi, my name is Christine, and I'll be your instructor for this yummy lesson. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to be teaching you how to make French bread from scratch. Because of the time it takes the bread to rise, you can pause the video while those minutes tick by and then restart the lesson at the end. The same will go for when the yeast is activating and when you have to knead the dough. But don't worry, I will tell you exactly how long each step is and when to pause the video. And when it's done, you can come back and learn some more. This easy vegan recipe only has five ingredients. Flour, sugar, yeast, water, and salt. So it's not only delicious, it's very clean. In fact, we only use one half a teaspoon of sugar, and that's just for the yeast to eat. Most of my life, I've avoided making bread from scratch because I couldn't get the yeast right. The water was either too cold, which means the yeast didn't activate, or it was too hot, which kills the little buggers. I didn't have a kitchen thermometer, so I never knew the exact temperature. Well, it turns out, you don't need a cooking thermometer. In fact, the temperature doesn't have to be that specific. Just hold your hand under the running water until it feels like a hot, relaxing shower. That's the perfect temperature for yeast, too. Start with two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. One half teaspoon of sugar and mix those two really well together. Mix that together with one cup of that perfectly relaxing hot shower temperature of water. This is a good time to pause the video and let that yeast rise. You'll know when it's ready because it'll get all foamy. When your yeast looks like this, you're ready to go on. It usually takes about five minutes. Mix together three and a half cups of flour along with one and a half teaspoons salt. Add the foamy yeast mixture to the flour plus one half cup extra water and mix it really well. After that, you've got to get your hands dirty. So get in there, mix as much of the flour as you can because the insides will be sticky. So pick up as much of that flour as you can. Ultimately, you will have to dump it onto a flat surface and knead it. Knead it with the palms of your hands like this. If it gets too sticky, you can always pick up more flour. But it's going to be a little sticky regardless. You're going to knead it like this for five minutes. Make sure you knead it long enough because it really does make a difference how much the dough is worked. Notice how as I'm working the dough, it's really not sticking to my hands all that much. That's because I've added a little bit of flour on the way. So by the time that you finish kneading for five minutes, it should be a nice solid piece of dough that is a little sticky to the touch, but it's not sticking to your hands. So set that timer five minutes and knead away. So after your five minutes of kneading, you're going to have a beautiful ball of dough. The next step is to let it rise. This is where it's time consuming because we're going to let it rise twice for an hour and a half each time. This first hour and a half, what you do is you take a clean bowl and some kind of spray oil or just a dab of, of olive oil or something would do as well. And just spray the bottom of the bowl. You don't have to use very much oil because it's just so the dough doesn't stick to the bowl. Place the dough in the bowl and turn it just once, just like that. Cover it loosely with a towel and set it in a nice, dry, fairly warm place. Just room temperature is usually good enough and you let it be for an hour and a half. So start your timer. I'll see you in an hour and a half, at which time this beautiful dough will be doubled. 
Welcome back. So it's been an hour and a half, so let's see how our dough did. Look at that beauty. That's what it should look like. That's what it's called whenever you hear it say the dough should double. There it is, all big and fluffy and beautiful. The first thing we do is punch it down. We spread out some flour and we're going to knead it again. We have to work the dough a second time. Work the dough just a little bit more and then divide in two. Next, we're going to prepare our baking sheet. Now, a clean cookie sheet will do, and you could either just spray it lightly with oil, or if you have some cornmeal, it makes a really great bottom layer for a French bread. Now you take each half of your dough and roll it out to like a long snake. Place it on your cookie sheet, just like so, and then do the same with the other half. Now we're all set to let it rise a second time. Your dough has to rise another hour and a half after you roll it out, but stop just a little bit early and preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you won't have to wait a moment longer than you have to to have that fresh, delicious French bread hot out of the oven. Cover it lightly with a towel again. And I'll see you in 90 minutes. After you let your bread rise for another hour and a half, the next step is to make some diagonal slashes in the dough. And if you'd like, you could sprinkle a little bit of flour on top because it makes it look very nice. So here's a tip on how to get that delicious, crunchy outside and soft, decadent inside that French bread and baguettes are known for. When you put it in the oven, in that hot 450 degree oven, you splash some water on the sides of the oven to create a bunch of steam inside. Close the door and five minutes later, do it again. And that steam somehow makes that outside crispy and crunchy but leaves the inside soft and delicious. Five more minutes, splash some more water. Then bake for 20 more minutes for a total of 25 minutes and you will have fresh delicious bread. All right, 25 minutes is up. Time to see how we did. Beautiful. Really crispy crust. Mmm. So soft on the inside. Decadent. And delicious. Thank you so much for joining me for this instructional video. I hope you had a good time making your French bread from scratch and will use the recipe many years to come. Have a lovely day.